everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to this lesson on the solubility rules. In our previous lessons, we have defined what a solution is, described how a solution is formed, and investigated the relationship between solubility and temperature. In this lesson, we will be establishing the rules of solubility and applying these rules to predict whether a solute is soluble or not. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to recall the solubility rules and use solubility rules to predict if a salt is soluble in water. Before we get going with some new ideas, let's recap on some important concepts. When sodium chloride is added to water, a solution is formed. The salt is called the solute and the water is called the solvent. In other words, sodium chloride is soluble in water. A solute is soluble if it dissolves completely in a solvent. Although some salts are soluble in water, there are other salts that will not dissolve. These are known as insoluble salts. By doing experiments, scientists have been able to identify the type of salts which are soluble and those which are insoluble. We will now investigate a few of these experiments. Firstly, we will be looking at the solubility of different nitrates. We will be testing a wide variety of nitrates. We are including one nitrate from group 1, namely sodium nitrate, one from group 2, namely barium nitrate, and one from group 3, aluminium nitrate in our selection. We will also test transition metal nitrates, namely copper 2 nitrate, also known as cupric nitrate, and zinc nitrate. To complete our selection, we will also be using ammonium nitrate and lead 2 nitrate. If the solute dissolves completely in 100 grams of water, then we say that the solute is soluble. If the solute does not dissolve, then we say that the solute is insoluble. The next step is to add the solute to each of the beakers and stir. Now what do you notice? All the nitrates that we tested dissolved. Now many other scientists have confirmed this result. So what we now have is our first solubility rule. All nitrates are soluble. This fact has some interesting implications for life on Earth. Nitrogen is a part of all protein molecules found in plants and animals. Plants and animals cannot absorb nitrogen in the air. In order to obtain nitrogen, plants absorb soluble salts containing nitrates. Animals in turn eat the plant to absorb compounds containing the nitrates. So without absorbing nitrates from the water, proteins cannot be synthesized by plants or animals. In our next experiment, we will investigate the carbonates. Remember to draw up a table to record your observations. We add the solids to the beakers of water and stir. Now here are the results. Notice that sodium carbonate and ammonium carbonate were the only two solutes that dissolved. The other carbonates were all insoluble. These results will help us make an important prediction. Let's look at our periodic table. Sodium is in group 1 and ammonium is a complex iron that behaves like group 1 metal ions. So what can you predict about the solubility of lithium carbonate and potassium carbonate? That's correct. These group 1 metal carbonates must also be soluble. Now in science, we use experimental results to form rules and then use these rules to make predictions. But we must be able to test our predictions by doing an experiment. Here is the real test. Let's add the solute and stir. Can you see that our prediction was correct? These results give us our second important solubility rule. 
all carbonates are insoluble except for the carbonates of ammonium and the group 1 metals. Calcium carbonate is also known as limestone. Water containing calcium bicarbonate seeps through rock and decomposes to form beautiful calcium carbonate formations in caves, known as stalactites. During this reaction, carbon dioxide and water are released into the cave. Now the carbon dioxide and water that are formed in the caves are able to react together to form the weak acid called carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid can in turn react with the limestone to form the soluble calcium bicarbonate. And this is how caves are formed in limestone. Let's now have a look at the various chemical reactions that are taking place within the cave. The first reaction shows what happens when calcium carbonate is deposited in stalactites. This process is known as deposition. The second reaction, carbonic acid, reacts with the calcium carbonate or limestone to form the soluble calcium bicarbonate. This process is known as erosion. I hope this helps you to understand why caves must be treated as very fragile environments. Now let's look at a few more solubility rules. All group 1 metals and ammonium salts are soluble. This is an easy rule to remember and is important in allowing our bodies to function properly. Athletes make sure that their salt and water levels remain high during marathons by drinking sports drinks that contain high levels of sodium and potassium salts. Without these salts, they would suffer from serious muscle cramps. Now let's have a look at rule number four. All chlorides, bromides and iodides are soluble except those of silver, mercury and lead. This rule predicts that silver chloride, silver bromide and silver iodide are insoluble. Now let's look at our last rule which is applicable to the sulfates. All sulfates are soluble except those of calcium, barium and lead. Now let's recap on all our solubility rules. These are important so you must learn them. Rule number one, all nitrates are soluble. Rule number two says all carbonates are insoluble except carbonates of group one metals and ammonium. Rule number three, all group one metals and ammonium salts are soluble. Rule four, all chlorides, bromides and iodides are soluble except those of silver, mercury and lead. And our last rule, rule number five, all sulfates are soluble except those of calcium, barium and lead. Now let's have a look at how we can use these rules. Look at this question. Predict whether the following salts are soluble in water or not. Lead to chloride, ammonium bromide, silver nitrate and calcium sulfate. I have drawn up a table to record my predictions. Why don't you do the same and check to see whether your predictions are the same as mine. Lead to chloride contains a chloride ion. So now let's look at rule number four. All chlorides, bromides and iodides are soluble except those of silver, mercury and lead. This means that lead to chloride is insoluble. I'm going to write down insoluble next to lead to chloride in the prediction column. We can also see that ammonium bromide must be soluble since only silver bromide, mercury bromide and lead bromide are insoluble. There is another rule that will confirm this prediction. Can you remember it? Let's look at rule number three. 
All group one metals and ammonium salts are soluble. So I can safely say that ammonium bromide is soluble. This confirms my prediction. Now I have two more salts to consider. Let's first consider silver nitrate. Do you remember the rule for nitrates? Rule number one, all nitrates are soluble. So silver nitrate must be soluble. Let's record our prediction. Silver nitrate, soluble. Lastly, we have calcium sulfate. Let's look at rule number five. Rule number five says, all sulfates are soluble except those of calcium, barium, and lead. I'm sure you can predict that calcium sulfate will be insoluble. Let's record our last prediction. Calcium sulfate is insoluble. Now that we have made the predictions, let's see if they hold true. Let's take a close look at each test tube. For lead chloride, we predicted insoluble. You can see that this is true. Ammonium bromide is soluble, just as we predicted. Silver nitrate is also soluble, while calcium sulfate is insoluble. I'm sure you'll agree that solubility rules. Okay, in our next set of lessons, we will be referring to these rules often, so please make sure that you learn them.